<laughs> oh my gosh, you're joking. This is so cool. <laughs> Maybe one of the most aesthetic lunches I've ever had. We've just arrived at our first location of the trip, which is called Hatanashi Village. And this is actually part of the Kamano Kodo Trail. It's one of the routes that's less common, but it's already so pretty. Oh, just like the drive in, we're going so high into the mountains that we're like at eye level with the clouds. And so we're like kind of in a cloud right now. And it's just so like misty and moody and beautiful. I'm pretty certain that that's gonna be like a weeping cherry blossom tree. I wanna come back here in spring. <laughs> It is decided. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Oh my god, that was so unexpected. That is a big ass fish. Two of them. Okay, come look at the fish. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's massive. So chunky. So there's only one person who lives up here, but I guess like there's a lot of travelers that come through here for the Kamano Kodo Trail. I definitely want to come back. What the heck? This is so cute. This is exactly the kind of area that I love to visit. It's like a kind of like Nakasendo trail, post town trail kind of vibe. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. Just like little, the little details, you know, I really like it. like a quick little pit stop on the side of the road like <laughs> like not even a one minute walk from the side of the road just this huge amazing waterfall man I would swim here so quick in summer it's such a good swimming spot there's so much it's like deep water you could just yeah. jump from here wow I've seen photos of this place in summer and it looks amazing so cool Okay, so we have just arrived at a place called Kuchu no Mura, which I think translates to something like village in the air. I think it's something that they would call like an activity park in Japan and then it's, it's like this one big area that has a lot of different things to offer. Tree houses, there's like little like high ropes course, a place where you can just chill. They offer camping, uh, they offer like, you know, camping inside one of those big plastic dome things. And the thing that we're gonna be doing just now is a sauna experience in a van, which is very cool. And maybe a cold plunge? I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> degrees which is better now we cracked the door a little bit because it was like 78 degrees before and I was like maybe that's not good <laughs> <laughs> I would never expect that it would get this hot in here I'm like it's a van how hot can I get nearly time for a cold plunge Ooh, you gonna go for it it's time and jump in jump in good it's actually amazing like everything that they provide for you they provide the towels they've got this little like poncho thing to keep you warm the cold plunge then everything it's so cool I reckon this would be amazing in spring so we're about to go check out the the air village kind of thing like the high ropes kind of area um, it's normally not open during winter so we're not actually going to go on them but we can just get to see it but in spring is when it opens I'm pretty sure spring to autumn and uh, it already looks amazing so I'm really keen to see see what it's like <sighs> I give a small introduction. My name is Jolan. I came from France like nine years ago mm. and I opened this treetop park 
five years ago, something like that. Mm -hmm. The place is called Kuchunomula, meaning the village in the sky. Because when I came in first in this village, I was a, a lumberjack actually. I was doing forestry. We have a lot of forest here and I think it was a good idea not only to harvest wood for production, but to use those beautiful forests to spend time in. Mm -hmm. And I was missing this outdoor asobi, uh -huh. playful thing. Mm -hmm. So I decided to create a park where Japanese people can relax and enjoy nature. Definitely want to come back in spring yeah. or summer. This is, I feel like this was like made for us. <laughs> it's exactly the kind of thing that, that I love doing. It's huge. It goes, it's like all around here. We've only like touched half of it. There's a whole nother thing over there. This is massive. <laughs> oh, ho, ho. So, <laughs> he's opened it up just for us to get to like just to just to have a little taste of it. So cool. Apparently there's a really good view at the end. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is awesome. Whoa! Ah, oh, that's so nice. Look at that look out. Oh my goodness. So uh, the, yeah. the objective of the park is to be uh, tree friendly, so we try not to damage the tree as much as possible. So right. we use these kind of techniques. Same for the tree house. We want the trees to like a, to last as long as possible. Right. And we mm. should think like every installation is not permanent actually. Every mm. 10, 15 years we'll have to destroy the park to mm. leave the tree right. free. Mm. And so yeah, it's not permanent for sure. This is so cool. Oh my gosh, are you kidding? This is amazing. Yeah. <gasps> Wait! <laughs> <laughs> Coffee time, guys. Coffee yeah! Time. <laughs> oh my gosh. Stop, this is too cute. I take it off? Yeah. Okay. Take oh my gosh. Yeah, thank, thank, you, you. thank you. We have a delivery. Oh my god, this is so cute. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> this is adorable. This is so good. <laughs> oh. I just like, can't believe how lovely this place is. And speaking to the Speaking to the owner for a bit, like you can really, really tell that he loves nature and he really like knows how to appreciate nature. Insane. It's so beautiful. It's so cool. This is amazing. That was great. I love it. <laughs> Very simple though. It's cold now. Oh. Uh, in summertime it's good, yeah. Yeah, yes. yeah. So this is just a place people can like sit and enjoy coffee. Uh, one hour, two hours, one day. Oh, no. For one, for one uh, group. Oh, one group. Ah, oh, nice. So you get the whole thing to yourself. Mm. Wow. I really, really love it. Your gorge tourism <laughs> ambassador. <laughs> you the tourism ambassador? I believe it. I would come here just for you. Right, next spot on the destination is one that you're probably already familiar with if you watch my videos because I've been here already uh, recently actually, and it's called Dorokyo Gorge, which is this absolutely gorgeous uh gorge yeah so i have been here a, a couple of times already once on my youtube channel and i've done uh paddle boarding but there is like a boat that you can take through here and there's a restaurant nearby and i haven't done those things here before so i'm really really looking forward to that yeah i found out something interesting which is that this gorge actually kind of straddles three different prefectures all together so it's wakayama nara and mie prefecture and they all kind of share portions of it which is really cool quite unique but yeah I'm looking forward to it a lot. It's so beautiful. This place is like phenomenal. <laughs> one of the most aesthetic lunches I've ever had <laughs> in the Japanese room like with that view such a simple meal but like really delicious very traditional amazing and then even if you don't get that top Japanese room like even the view from the regular cafe is also incredible uh, 
this spot, man, this spot. Anyway, um, now we are gonna go ride on the boat, which I've never been able to do before, so I'm really looking forward to it. Wait, these chairs are for us? Oh my gosh. He was just like, oh, you can just stand at the front if you want. I don't know about that. Hi. <laughs> this gorge is so incredible. Like, and it's so peaceful as well. The water doesn't move very fast at all. It's usually not too windy through here either. And like he was saying before that just over in that area, the water is like 20 meters deep, which is insane. And like these walls just like tower over you. It's so incredible. So we've got Mia, Nara, Wakayama, okay. <laughs> all together, standing the big in three. beautiful gorge. <laughs> Pretty amazing. Pretty cool. <laughs> Pretty cool. Oh my gosh, what? This is so pretty. It's huge. Wow. I am very impressed with this hotel. It's so beautiful. They've got like the old, like, kind of like the skeleton of the building and they've like still left it all there. Like even all the beams you can tell are like the original ones, but it's all like newly re renovated and clean and beautiful. Wow, and then this is all of the food for dinner and it's kind of just up to us like we can cook it whenever we want We've got like a big pot So good. There's a katatsu oh, I love it it's so good. And then the view on the balcony is lovely as well Like you're just looking at rocks, but they've got these little lights on the side that shine against it So at night time, even though it's just rocks, it looks really beautiful Attention to detail man amazing and I almost forgot the best part about it is, yeah. <laughs> so we've got like the standard shower room, except it's all made for this beautiful wood and the beautiful hinoki, which is a kind of like Japanese wood that's often used and it smells so nice. Uh, yeah, so you have your own little like, kind of like an onsen. It's not onsen water, but still lovely. How good. Apparently this place was designed by like a famous architect who's not Japanese at all. He's a foreigner, his name is Alex something. But anyway, he's designed like a bunch of buildings like around in the countryside of Japan. So yeah, beautiful. Good job, Alex. I love it. Hey. hey. That's a true chopstick test. If you can pick up tofu out of a hot pot oh. with chopsticks. Oh, no. Oh, oh. no. <laughs> oh, oh sh <laughs> it's under my sock. So we're on our way to a place called Tamaki Shrine, which is apparently really beautiful. It's like on top of a mountain, and all I can think about is how cold it is. <laughs> it's really, really cold. Oh, oh my gosh. It's kind of hard to see from here, but that's massive. It's like a, a cedar tree. I think that's sugi. Sugi no ki is cedar. And uh, it's huge apparently it's 3000 years old which is wild to think about oh my gosh the temple also is massive this is really surprising it's like up here on top of the mountain we're the only ones here it's crazy <laughs> wow 
<laughs> not even like, not even touching it. Mm. Very fun. Wow. Oh my gosh. So this is called Tani Tani Zenon Zurubashi, I think is what it's called. But anyway, it's uh, it's probably like the largest suspension bridge I think I have ever seen. It's massive. Like I hope it comes across in camera. It's it's so 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 big, and the platform to walk on like isn't that big at all. It's not that wide, and it's got these big like gaps down the side of it. Apparently, there's like a really nice cafe on the other side. So we need to cross the bridge. It's kind of alarming, like how much the floorboards move when you step on them. Like why, why do they move so much? Wow, such a nice cafe. Oh, hello. <laughs> this is a beautiful building. So nice. Yeah, we only opened in November. Whoa, amazing. Oh, it smells good. It smells like good coffee. Yeah, this is a Tatsu, Tatsuka. So it's a Tatsuka money. That you can use and it's Kofiakoen. Uh. So you can use it in a variety of local businesses. Just in this area. Uh, so in this area, but like the gas station you can use it at, really? other cafes. That's so crazy. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So like if you if it's like twelve, you could pay two of these and then, and then, and then, and then use the change so that you can Wow. Authorize. Yeah, yeah. So, so every year they give you a bunch. Oh. Like everyone just gets, I don't know awesome. how that's determined, yeah, yeah. I can't go that deep on it. Everyone gets them, so it just, it's nice, it gets it's you so out. Cool. And, can I get you guys some? Mm. Oh yeah, I'd love a, a cappuccino. Cappuccino? Yeah. yeah, can I get some yes. cookies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so those are just those, you can, you know. <laughs> Well, everyone, I have said it once and I will say it again. This area of Japan is just so, so underrated. It's honestly shocking how many things there are to see, how many hidden gems there are in just this one area, like the Wakayama, Nara, Mie kind of spot. It's, it's crazy. It's such an <laughs> incredible area and I still don't really see too many people there, except for the like Kumano Kodo, like Kumano Hongo Taisha. That is the only area that even gets slightly busy, but even then it's not that crazy. Yeah, I've just got a, lo a lot of love for this place. I'm kind of shocked that I haven't actually been to this area in particular because Chris and I have been to so many other spots. Like we just recently went to Dorokyo Gorge. So I have been to that one before, but in my opinion, I I think I want to put like a kind of rating towards the end of my videos because um, some people have been saying that like it's hard to know if these places are like good enough that it's actually worth the trip all the way to get out here. So considering how far away this place is from Osaka, it's about a three hour drive or so. Public transport, is, it's, it's a little bit iffy here or there, but it's definitely doable. I would, I'd give this place like a five stars out of five or like maybe four and a half stars out of five just because public transport's kind of harder to navigate. But there is so many things to see. They're all incredible incredibly beautiful, incredibly hidden still, definitely worth it if you're going to Osaka. I think I said in the video, but I can't remember. 
I feel like if this kind of area was this close to Tokyo, it would be way more packed than it is. But since it's close to Osaka, it's not. And that's good for us. Yeah, Chris and I were visiting, obviously, in winter, which is probably like the least aesthetic season. But it was still so beautiful. So I can only imagine how good it's going to be in spring and summer. Like I'm actually already planning a trip to go back because I want to finally see some of the Komodo Kodo. So I was like taking note of places that I want to go back to, especially Kuchinomura. I think that's going to be incredible in spring. I'm so excited to go back. I think it's going to be amazing. So anyway, uh, you have three options for how you can get to these places. The first option is driving. Of course, this is going to be 100% the easiest way to see this place, especially because some of the spots are just like a little bit awkward to get to. And also the public transport, which I'll talk about in a sec. It can be very time consuming because you wait for the bus and there's only like a couple in a day or whatever. So driving is by far going to be the easiest. The second option is by using public transport. So a lot of the main spots in this trip are accessible with public transport. So uh, the, the gorge, for example, Doroku Gorge, uh, Totsukawa, like the village itself, that is accessible, like the onsen, I'm fairly certain, and little like things in the village, but there are a few places that are not. So Kuchiramura, which is that beautiful treehouse area along with the, the sauna and stuff like that that is not accessible so it, it's tricky I'll put whatever public transport information I find in the description of this video I actually didn't even know that there was public transport to Doroko Gorge until I saw a bus go by and I was like where did that come from? So yes, any information I find, I'll put it in the description down below. The third option is Totsukawa Prefecture. They're, they're doing their best to increase tourism here and they've started to offer kind of like customizable tour groups, tour group private, private to it. Like a, what, what do you call that person who drives you around? Kind of like a taxi, the, the other one, not, not the taxi. You know what I'm talking about. So yeah, they, they can, you can customize your own tour, pick the places that you would like to visit, and then they can drive you around to the spots for a fee. Oh my God, I forgot to say. Yeah, obviously <laughs> this is a sponsored video by Totsukawa. Thank you Totsukawa City for sponsoring my channel. I really appreciate it. I have started to take these sponsored like tourism trip jobs a lot less, unless it's a place that I really, really want to go to myself, or it's, it's really suits my channel, it suits my personality. And this one was immediately, I was like, oh, of course I want to go there. I was really, really, really happy to be visiting with the sponsor trip. But yeah, I still give this place 4.5 stars out of five in terms of how worth it it is to visit from a main city, which would be Osaka. It's just incredibly beautiful. It's got all of the vibes that I think people are after when they want like countryside off the beaten track. It's truly a different, I hate to say it, but it's a different side of Japan. It's the other side of Japan, you know, all those buzzwords and all of that. It is really all of that. And um, yeah, I hope you get the chance to visit. Thank you so much for watching. If you like it, like it. If you want to see more, please subscribe and go check out my other video where we went to Doroko Gorge and then also Kawayu and another spot that I can't remember. I went there recently and had a great time with my friends. We went paddle boarding. It was in a different season as well. So it might help you to kind of piece your trip together a little bit better. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.